Thank you, everybody. I declare the meeting open at three minutes past six o'clock. On behalf of the City of Vincent, I'd like to acknowledge that tonight we meet on the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to let members of the public gallery know that we do web stream our council meetings now, but that doesn't include the um, public question time, so when you're speaking that part won't be web streamed or recorded. Um, CEO, do we have, we don't have any members on um, approved leave, everyone is here, full house. Um, so we'll go to public question time. There is no specific order, so whoever would like to address council first, just please come up to the microphone. We do ask that you state your name, address and the item number which you're speaking to this evening. And the CEO does time um, the three minutes and you'll probably hear a little beeping sound when the time's up. Thank you. Um, CEO, I believe we have a, a request for a leave of absence. Uh, through you, yes we do, Madam Mayor. Um, Council members, we have received a request for leave of absence from Mayor Cole for the period 13th of April 2018 to 22nd of April 2018, 2018 that requires council endorsement. Can I have a mover and a seconder please? Move Councillor Harley, seconded Councillor Castle. All those in favour? Declare it carried. Thank you very much. Um, we're now moving to receiving of petitions, deputations and presentations. I believe we have Neil. Yes. Um, confirmation of minutes. We have two sets of minutes to confirm tonight. We have the ordinary meeting of the 6th of March 2018. Can I please have a mover for those minutes? Councillor Toppelberg, seconded Councillor Hallett. All those in favour? Declare the minutes carried. And the second minutes are for our special meeting last week on the 27th of March 2018. Can I please have a mover? Councillor Loden, seconder. Councillor Murphy, all those in favour? Declare the minutes carried. Um, some announcements um, by the presiding member. Yes, I do have a few announcements this evening. As usual, it's uh, pretty busy around the city of Vincent, so there's a few things that have been happening. Um, I just wanted to let people know that yesterday we did have a visit from the Minister for Transport, the Honourable Rita Safiotti MP, and our local member, John Carey, who announced that they're contributing 50% to the build of new Loftus um, Street bike lanes, which the city has been aiming to do to fill a gap in our bike network for about two years now. This is the second attempt to get funding from the state government and it was successful on this occasion. So um, the bike lanes will cost around $420,000 and it's a $210,000 contribution each from ourselves and state government. And um, we're very much looking forward to receiving the grant and getting on with that connection, which is an important connection to Leadable, to Beatty Park, through to the Bulwer Street bike lanes and of course to our Oxford Street bike lanes and to our Shakespeare Street Boulevard that's um, currently um, due to be constructed. Um, also just to note that this weekend we are opening um, officially the Hyde Street Reserve which has been a fantastic project, community driven, with great support from neighbours and the, and the residents in the area where we've converted a small section of um, low use road to um, adjoin the park and create a park that's now 50% uh, larger than when we started. And it's very popular with families. It's a fully fenced playground. There are a lot of young children that go there and this builds on some um, improvements that we made a couple of years ago where we introduced a swing set and to broaden the appeal there, is quite a, there was quite a demand for turf in this playground so that older kids can um, have a bit of a run around and play with, and uh, also for, for um, families to picnic. So 11am on um, Sunday, please come along. Anyone who's interested to see what you can achieve when you take back a bit of road, do it in-house with our engineering team driving this project all for the very low cost of $120,000 and a $20,000 grant from our federal member for Perth, Tim Hammond, for some solar lighting in the park. 
Also, just to mention, on Saturday we are upscaling our native plant sale, which is our biannual plant sale for residents, by adding a sustainability hub where we're going to have free advice and information from a range of experts on sustainability issues. We'll have um, Water Corp there advising on water safety ideas. We'll have the Switch Your Thinking program providing advice on solar. Um, we'll have some free environmentally sustainable advice available, but we do recommend booking for that. And um, compost and worm farm workshop happening and our waste management team will be on board to provide some updates on waste as well. Also just to mention that we have, um, we have been um, quite um, successful recently in the awards category. We recently um, won a Place Leaders Asia Pacific Award for our work around place management in the City of Vincent. This is um, quite an achievement for our Policy in Place Directorate and our Council who's led this approach um, because it is basically saying that we have an innovative way of um, committing to local place, um, sorry, place based local based place making, bit of a tongue twister, and um, that they're very, um, the jury was impressed by our place management approach generally and our exceptional level of integration across all relevant stakeholders and that would be including our town team, which is our town teams, which is um, something which is now taking off across um, not just the Perth metropolitan area but other states of Australia now. So that's fantastic to see. And also just a shout out to um, our staff for taking out the WA round of the Australasian Management Challenge um, where a group of our staff who had uh, come across from various directorates worked together to mount a um, management challenge and um, represented against a number of other WA local governments and won and will be flying to Canberra to represent um, WA and Vincent in a, um, a national challenge. So well done to those staff members. Also just to note that our community budget submissions are open right now. They've uh, successfully been run for the past two budget years and we're again calling on our community to put forward ideas under our council priorities for um, initiatives and projects that they would love to see happen in their community. And to give an example, we do have a number of those projects that uh, community members have put forward happening right now, such as the Braithwaite Park toilet block, which is due to start completion in a couple of weeks. And that was a great initiative that came through um, from community members. So we do um, back these initiatives and we do, do fund these fantastic initiatives that come through from our community. It really does happen. Okay, so um, that's enough from me. I'll now move to the CEO for declarations of interest. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Um, I've received a number of disclosures of interest. Uh, the first is from me personally, Link Sover CEO. It's a disclosure of financial interest in relation to confidential item 18.1. The extent of my interest in this matter is that the matter relates to uh, my remuneration and my contract of employment with the city in the role of Chief Executive Officer. The second disclosure I've received is from Councillor Josh Tolberg on item 9.3. It is a disclosure of impartiality interest. The extent of Councillor Tolberg's interest in this matter is that he has a professional relationship with one of the adjoining neighbours. Councillor Tolberg has briefly discussed the proposal in terms of the planning framework and the impact on the neighbourhood. Councillor Tolberg has declared that as a consequence of his professional relationship with one of the adjoining neighbours, there may be a perception that his impartiality on the matter could be affected. He declares that he will consider the matter on its merits and vote accordingly. I've also received a proximity interest disclosure from Councillor Josh Tobelberg on item 9.6, North Perth Town Centre Parking Review. The extent of Councillor Tobelberg's interest is that his primary residence lies within the area that is subject to the parking restrictions. Council Tolberg is not seeking approval from Council to participate in the debate or to remain in chambers or vote on the matter when it is discussed by Council. The next impartiality or disclosure of interest I've received is an impartiality interest disclosure from Councillor Jimmy Murphy on agenda item 11.1, um, waiver of lease for Leaderville Oval. The extent of Councillor Murphy's interest in this matter is that through his work on the Leaderville Carnival, he has had a professional relationship with Mr Peter Capes, who is the CEO of Subiaco Football Club and also the chair of Leaderville Connect. 
Council Murphy has declared that as a consequence there may be a perception that his impartiality on the matter could be affected. Council Murphy has declared that he will consider the matter on its merits and vote accordingly. And lastly, I have received an impartiality interest disclosure from Councillor Alex Castle on the same agenda item 11.1. .1. Councillor Castle has disclosed that through her work with Leaderville Connect, which ended in February 2018, she had a professional relationship with Peter Capes, who is the CEO of Subiaco Football Club and Chair of Leaderville Connect. As a consequence, there may be a perception that Councillor Castle's impartiality on the matter could be affected. Councillor Castle has declared that she will consider the matter on its merits and vote accordingly. Thank you, CEO. Um, I'll now go around and ask council members if there are any particular items that they wish to um, draw out for debate this evening. Councillor Hallett, are there any items? Councillor Castle? No. Councillor Harley. Thank you, Mayor. Item 9.2, please. Councillor Murphy. Councillor Loden. 14.1. Thank you. Um, Councillor Patakis. Councillor Toppelberg. Uh, 9.3, thank you. Councillor Gondoshevsky. Uh, sorry. And 9.1 as well. Um, there is an amendment on the table for 13.1. It's uh, Councillor Castle. Yes, pull that one forward. Thank you, councillors. I'll just ask the CEO to go through the items that will be moved on block this evening. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Uh, members of the gallery and also anyone streaming at home, I'll now just read through the agenda items that will be voted by council on block and adopted in accordance with the officer recommendations as printed. And these items exclude the items that council members have just requested be withdrawn any financial interest disclosure items that councillors have raised as well as public items or re items requested by the public gallery and absolute majority items which will all be discussed independently. So the following items will now be adopted by council on block. They are item 9.4, 11.1, 11.2, 11.3, 11.4, 11.3, 11.4, 11.3, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.4, 11.
there are two figures. There's the 2.2 metres in width versus what the applicant is seeking, which is the 4.1 metres. And I'm assuming that if you look at um, page... That's the page number. Page 102 of the um, of the um, agenda, it shows a f an awning for the full length of the um, of the part of the home that sits forward. Can you just describe the length of the awning as as proposed in that in that plan there, and could you also describe what the issue is with the with the um, 4.1 versus um, 2.2 metres in width? Certainly. Um, so through you, Mayor Cole, there's two... Um, so the, the part of the building that's forward at the moment already has an existing tiled awning above the window. Um, it's not the entire length of that front portion of the dwelling, but it is more than 2.2, so it's, it's wider than the existing window. Um, the image you see on page 100 and 102 is a perspective with the bullnose awning um, installed and that awning is 4.1 metres wide and 2.5 metres deep. Um, the R codes set two requirements for awnings in this kind of situation. One is that the awning can't be within the front setback area um, and sorry, it can be one metre, it can protrude one metre into the front setback area and it can't be more than 20% of the width of the building, um, oh, sorry, of the lot, tw more than 20% of the width of the lot. So um, the two requirements, the 1.7 metre depth, is to, is basically if the, sorry, if the awning was going to be deemed to comply, um, it couldn't be more than 1.7 metres deep, so that it wouldn't be more than one metre into the front setback, and it couldn't be more than 2.2 metres wide, given the lots. Um, given the lot width, so it can't be more than 20% of the frontage, so or 2.2 metres wide. Um, but the awning that's proposed there is 4.1 metres wide and 2.5 metres deep. Hopefully that answers the question. So just to elaborate then, um, if the applicant was seeking to provide an awning that was 1.7 metres deep by 2.2 metres wide, then that would not require that would be exempt from planning approval because it is um, it is com it is deemed to comply. Um, but if the applicant wishes to have uh, a greater width, then a, then that requires development approval. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Councillor Toppleberg. Sorry, I forgot. I did have just a minor amendment. Well, it's actually relatively major. So, just propose an amendment to recommendation one, which is to del delete the words and awning from recommendation one because they are expressly intended to be refused as part of recommendation two. I did speak to the director earlier and it was too late for a replacement page, so. Sorry, Councillor Tomberg, can you go through that again? So recommendation one is to approve the application for a proposed carport addition, not carport and awning. So just delete the words and awning from recommendation one. So I do have a seconder for the amendment, Councillor Loden. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Toppleberg? Well, just, just, yeah, it speaks for itself, I think. Councillor Loden. Um, Director, is there any um, concern with that? Was there a reason it wasn't removed? Yes, through you, Mayor Cole. It was included last week in the briefing notes, but on review um, and splitting the, uh, the decision into two parts, or approval and a refusal, that should have been removed as well, the words and awning from the first, and should only have been in point two of the recommendation. Councillors, any comments or questions? Put the amendment, all those in favour? Declare it carried back to the substantive. Councillors, Councillor Hallett. There's a few puzzled faces. Um, I won't move the amendment because I think the um, advice in that question um, already responds to the issue and deemed to comply awnings. Councillor Loden. I'll ask my question then. Uh, so we don't have the ability to approve this as a 1.7 metre awning then because it hasn't been time to consider that, is that correct? Through you Mayor Cole, an amendment could be moved to um, approve 
an awning in a different form. So it is possible. Um, it, it wouldn't change the drawings and, and the plans that were approved, but there could be a condition to reduce the size of the awning to a particular dimension if Council considered that to be an appropriate outcome. Councillors, any further debate? Councillor Loden. Oh, did you move? Okay, just hang on a minute before you do that. Let me see if I had any comments I wanted to make. Oh, look, um, I had I had proposed an advice note just to clarify that where it is deemed to comply, there's no issue with that and it doesn't require um, a uh, planning approval but a building licence, but obviously that doesn't satisfy what the applicant is seeking, so I can understand why that hasn't been moved. Um, in relation to the um, request to put in an awning um, of a different width, I think it is a bit difficult to do that at this stage. Um, an amendment hasn't come forward. Um, from Council. Um, I'm not able to move an amendment as a presiding member, but I think it will stand for the applicant to then have to um, pursue that again as a separate development application with, with fresh plans detailing um, the width and um, depth of the awning sought. Um, so it is unfortunate that that hasn't been able to be provided to us this evening. Um, but on the basis of no amendment coming forward, I then move to Councillor Loden to close debate. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess I'm similarly I'm a little bit frustrated because um, we had this discussion last week at the potential to reduce it to a 1.7 metre awning um, and we don't have an amendment to enable that to happen. Um, but I would be supportive of that, that design. Um, but I, as it stands, um, I'll, I'll leave it as is. So thank you. Um, that closes debate, so I'll put it. All those in favour of the officer recommendation? All those against? I'll declare it, declare it carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. We'll now go through the agenda sequentially in terms of the items that we have left to consider this evening. So the next item is 9.1, 209 Vincent Street, West Perth, proposed four group dwellings. Can I have a mover, please? Moved, councillor Toppelberg, seconded, councillor Gonshevsky. Thank you. Uh, there was a lot of discussion last week about the crossover and the manoeuvrability. I think that's been reasonably resolved given the limitations and I do accept the fact that the WAPC's approval of the subdivisions next door uh, and the bulk of the crossovers in this section of, uh, of Vincent Street actually existing between Charles and Florence Street probably suggests that uh, it's not the city that's potentially setting that precedent, it's actually WAPC who have done so, so we are, uh, so I do accept that. Um, I have some, actually I will ask a question Firstly, um, the oh, I won't because I know the answer, so I'll leave that. That's probably easier. Um, I've got some serious concerns about the design. Uh, yes, it's a constrained site if you are looking at the access points, uh, but those outdoor living areas are provide, and I say this fairly, they provide a horrendous outcome for the future occupants of this development. We have four landlocked boxes that each sit. Uh, adjacent to each other. Um, they're referred to as courtyards. They are completely internal and effectively uh, due to the uh, RAD zoning and the uh, overlooking um, requirements of the R codes, all four of them will have the immediately uh, uh, or the, uh, will, will experience overlooking uh, from uh, the neighbouring uh, properties from the, upper, from the upper floors. Uh, I think that that provides for a, uh, a really poor living outcome for the future occupants of the development um, and I think that that could have quite easily been designed out. I mean the simple answer for me with this development is that if there were three, de three dwellings proposed on site rather than four we could have ended up with something quite different. Uh, that's the, the proponent's choice to go down that path but I think that it's basically squeezing too much onto the lot. I also think that looking at the 
uh, lot boundary setbacks where we're, we're um, between uh, 700 and 900 mil um, uh, reduced setbacks on each side. Uh, so it only under 16 metres width, we're talking about 10% of the lot width is a variation, even though it's effectively 5% on each side. So again, we've pretty much got boundary to boundary with four square boxes for outdoor living uh, in, as the internal courtyards. Um, the officers on page uh, 15 of, uh, talk about uh, the, uh, the impact uh, on the western boundary in terms of the um, the setback reductions and talks about a range of finishes being incorporated, uh, consider reducing the perception of bulk to the adjoining landowners. I did make comment last week. I don't think that that is supported by either the plans I've seen or the the elevations. There's effectively two materials that we see. One is uh, uh, face brick. The other is re rendered white wall. Um, I, I don't think that there is a particularly pleasant outlook for the neighbours, and that reduced setback will have uh, some impact. Um, yeah. Look, I. I uh, accept the fact that the properties that have been recently completed uh, and were approved under delegated authority to the uh, to the east uh, provide a um, similar well provide a somewhat basic architectural outcome for the street and we won't talk about the four pink group dwellings that exist on the the corner but I, I just uh, I think it it is a poor outcome for the site and it's a poor outcome for the future occupants uh, if it's approved as Recommended, but I will gladly listen to the debate. Councillors, Councillor Gonshevsky. Um, look, I, I understand and accept um, the um, discretion required on vehicle access. I agree that um, some elements of the design are um, will make um, navigating the site um, to be perhaps. Uh, I understand that we've had a, a thorough engineering review of access into and out of the property and that the driveways um, as being established as common property won't be parked out. It would be very interesting to see whether, how that occurs in, um, in real life, in the real world. Um, I, however, I'm, um, I'm happy to send this to WAPC in this regard. Um, I agree that there is a number of um, developments along the street that um, continue to maintain access via Vincent Street um, and that will have also, um, I guess, uh, densely developed along that street. Um, I understand that there is a proposed amendment on the yellow in relation to landscaping, um, which I'm happy to move. Um, Thank you, Councillor Gondoshevsky. Do I have a seconder for the amendment on the yellow? Um, Councillor Loden? Oh, thank you. Um, I, the recommendation um, is looking to amend the um, provision of deep soil zone um, and um, well, maintain the provision of deep soil zone um, uh, but increase uh, canopy coverage. Um, noting that um, more than 50% of the setback in the front is hard stand um, and noting the need for additional landscaping to compensate for this. Um, yes, I mean, um, our DEM to comply standard would require 50% and we're seeing um, uh, only 15% of the front setback area in landscaping because of the access issues, so I'm supportive of this um, um, proposed amendment. Councillor Loden, do you wish to speak? Does anyone wish to speak to the amendment? Um, look, I'll just make a few comments. I did speak um, with the... Sorry, did someone wish to speak? Councillor Harley, do you wish to speak? Um, I'm um, supportive of the amendment, um, albeit because it, 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 it improves slightly um, what looks to me like a, you know, a very interesting, um, interesting motion. I think it's trying to make a silk purse out of sow's ear myself, but I'm happy to support it on the basis of at least if it gets up, there'll be a requirement for some extra greenery. Thank you, Councillor Harley. Um, as you know, you never know which way an approval may go. So um, when I analysed the issues that I had with this development, um, the main issue for me was um, the access to Vincent um, requiring the um, circular uh, style um, uh, driveway, which took up a lot of um, opportunity for landscaping in the front setback and reduced the um, about the, um, sorry, increase the hard stand to some 85%. And when I spoke with the director, he said it was uh, clear that the plans 
provided for 40% tree canopy, so then the question was, well, given there are, there are potentially concessions in relation to hard stand in the front setback area and concessions in terms of deep soil zone, which are things that the City of Vincent is uh, pretty, pretty good at defending and, and ensuring does happen, that at the very least um, we should then condition what is shown on the plans to be the ability to achieve a 40% um, uh, canopy. So that's why I've put forward the amendment. Are there any further comments? Okay, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? Declare it carried. Thank you. Back to the substantive. Any comments or questions in relation to the substantive motion? Um, Councillor yes, Harley? I've got um, a couple of questions and just reading through the notes. So my um, concerns are several, although um, um, other councillors have um, raised some concerns um, that I agree with as well. My concern is um, one of the first issues I dealt with when I got elected actually within the first month back in 2011 was the refusal um, by our officers to allow a couple who had a home on Angove Street to put a carport over a driveway which had been in use for many, many years. And it was fierce and the prime um, objection was that they would have to reverse that onto Angove Street um, and it had been many months and um, at some future point after some discussions um, occurred the officers um, did end up reviewing the decision the um, people put a new application in and they have got a carport and they live happily ever after that um, that first issue that was raised with me as um, an elected um, member has stayed with me and I've thought about it every time an application comes forward and about the impact not only on the people using the driveway, the residents, um, but also on the street, Vincent Street, as, as we all know, is a horrendously busy street and it is not a good street to even get out on in forward gear, uh, let alone in reverse. In fact, um, you know, several of the, uh, of the driveways out from Betty Park, you can sit there for a very long period of time, even just trying to turn left. So that is a prime concern to me that this is, um, while I respect the developer and the applicant's right to try and get as much yield from this property as possible, and they certainly are doing that, I don't believe this is a good outcome and there were other options which would have made it safer. Um, for example, circular driveway, et cetera, through that property. Um, I'm concerned about the lack of parking for visitors. They certainly can't park on Vincent Street. Um, I guess the nearest parking they can park in is Biddy Park um, or somewhere in that near vicinity. And I'm very concerned about visitor parking on Florence Street or the lack of parking on Florence Street, which is a very um, tiny street. So um, I have um, concerns about the courtyards, um, concerns about the outcome for the um, owners and tenants, but that's obviously a choice that they make. I'm concerned that this corner of Vincent Street will in years to come be a place that planners go past as an example of outcomes to learn from, um, because there's you know there's some interesting um, planning outcomes um, from many years gone um, gone by. I um, I don't support um, the proposal as it stands, and so I'm just seeking advice about if this does not get approved tonight, will it go back to the MAPC? What happens after tonight, if it is Director, either... Director, can you please answer the question? Yes, through Mayor Cole, if the application is refused tonight, it would depend on the form of the refusal, but Council does have the discretion to refuse the application under the MRS. And if that occurred, then it wouldn't be determined by the WAPC. So the only time it would need to go to the WAPC is if it was approved, um, which is contrary to the Commission's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Harley, anything further? Okay, councillors, no one wishes to speak further on this item? Okay, well I'll be putting it. All those in favour of approval? All those against? I declare it lost. So that's been refused. Um, at this point we may need an alternative. We just need an alternate motion to be drafted, so if you just bear with us for a moment.
Um, if I could just have a show of hands of those who um, voted against. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Cole, uh, just to the director, John, are you attempting to craft an alternate recommendation for council to consider? Yes, uh, through you, Mayor Cole, I did draft something um, this evening, um, which we're just having typed up, which I can put on the screen for council to consider, um, if you would like. That would be very much appreciated. Thank you, director. Well, what we might do is um, continue to the next item so that you have a bit of time to work through that, which is probably very distracting for the director because he may also have to answer questions on the next item. Um, director, would you prefer that we move to the next item or would you prefer that we give you a few minutes to complete this task first? Um, through you, Mayor Cole, I think the only issue there is that refusal has been drafted up on the basis of the access from Vincent Street. So it really comes down to the reasons that council members would like to see incorporated into the reason for refusal. If you would like um, some of the other issues that were touched on by council members covered off, so that the outdoor living areas, um, the impact of the development on the adjoining properties, outdoor living areas, so um, the reduced setbacks, then I will need to spend a bit of time to get that right and it would be appreciated if um, I could have a bit of time to do that. Sure, thank you. Um, the CEO has pointed out that not only does this alternate um, recommendation require the attention of the Director of Development Services but also of our minute taker Mark so um, it's pretty tricky to move forward with the rest of the meeting and um, expect both people to, to do two things at once so we might just have to have a short break while we wait. We won't officially adjourn the meeting but we'll just give them a few minutes.
I feel I should give an update in case anyone's tuning in on the web stream. We are waiting for an alternate motion to be drafted, so please be, bear with us for a few more moments. Thank you.
We've only been here three years. Oh, that's enough down there. Would you like some more announcements? We'll talk about the fact that Mount Hawthorne Hub are having their 70s Disco Glam fundraiser on Friday night. Please come on down and support the Mount Hawthorne Tub Tub Town team. Tickets are only $15. Thank you, Councillor Fatakis. All fundraising will go towards the Mount Hawthorne Hub, or the Mount Hawthorne Streets and Lanes Festival. Council members, I would like to take this opportunity. It is a timely reminder that if you are considering um, voting against a um, item, to please do make an attempt to have an alternate recommendation um, prepared in advance, because it does help our meetings flow much more efficiently. And now that we have our briefing meeting um, in advance, that should be something that is um, relatively um, straightforward. Thank you. Okay, we now have a uh, proposed alternative recommendation for item 9.1. Can I please have a mover for this item? Um, if you need some time to read through first, that's fine. Madam Mayor, in the interest of getting things moving, I'm happy to move it. You're happy to move it. Thank you, Councillor Toppelberg. Um, do I have a seconder at this point? Councillor Hallett, thank you. Okay, so this may seem a little unusual, but I'm actually going to uh, propose and see how it flies, the deletion of clauses one, two and three. Uh, which effectively says, well, from my point of view, it, the, the reason being that uh, I don't have an issue with the uh, the access. For me, it's reasons four and five are the issues, but that hasn't been tested in the chamber. So we'll have, uh, I just ha I have issue given that the uh, WAPC had not supported it. That if that's put up as a reason for refusal, it may, in my personal opinion, unfairly prejudice the applicant if they would choose to challenge it. So I will see how that flies in the chamber, but I'm, ha I'm going to move for the deletion of reasons one, two and three. Is there a seconder for the amendment? There being no seconder, the amendment falls. Okay, that's fine. Unusual considering four people voted in favour of it. I would have thought one of them would have thought that that was appropriate, but anyway. Um, so just a uh, question through you to the Director of Development Services in relation to proposed reason four. Uh, the uh, uh, some of those issues, given that some of those issues can potentially be designed out without necessarily reducing the setback, are you happy that the wording of it uh, provides for that, uh, addresses that sufficiently, that it's not the setback necessarily by measurement of metres, that it's necessarily the design and the finishes and the way that that potentially impacts it? Are you comfortable that that's captured in that wording? Yes, through you, Mayor Cole. The, the design principles talk about the impact of building bulk on adjoining properties, and that simply relates to the design of the development, not necessarily the setback. So the, the setback calls up, um, because the setback doesn't comply with the deemed to comply standards of the ARCOs, it calls up that building bulk 
design assessment. Um, and given the comments made in the chamber, I, I understand that count, some council members, those that spoke of it, have concern about the impact that the bulk and the design has on those adjoining properties. Okay, thank you. So just um, to finish my comments, uh, and I know that in the scheme of things, it, and I won't move to amend it, but for me, reasons four and five are more critical than uh, reasons one, two and three. But just uh, by way of looking at my, well, my concerns in relation to the outdoor living areas, if you look at page 23 of the agenda, which shows the ground, uh, uh, which depicts the ground floor uh, of each of the units, and one of the things which, so in the, we, there's a dotted blue line which shows the extent of the upper floor that actually overhangs uh, if you take away the landscaping or the proposed landscaping proportion and the extent of the upper floor, so effectively uh, the part of the courtyards that uh, have a roof and three sides effectively, uh, you, we're dealing with probably, at a rough guess, about eight, eight or nine square metres of open outdoor space uh, that's in there. And I just don't think that that, given that we're dealing with a vacant site, uh, in a north-south orientation, I don't think enough consideration has been given to a design outcome that provides for reasonable amenity for future occupants. Um, the, there is the great advantage of being directly opposite um, the reserve, which uh, gives uh, opportunities for outdoor recreation, but as far as the livability of the units themselves, I think um, I struggle to accept that that meets the design principles uh, of the R codes. Uh, and simply for me, with the setbacks and the design that is proposed, uh, in order to uh, apply discretion, I think that the design should offer something to either the uh, in the public realm, to the neighbour adjoining properties, uh, and or to the future occupants, or preferably all three. And I just don't see that that value has been provided, and don't see a reason that we should be applying discretion to allow those reduced setbacks. So, for those reasons, I will um, propose the alternative recommendation to refuse the application. Thank you, Councillor Toppelberg. Seconded by Councillor Hallett. Uh, not much to add to that. Just, I guess, my main um, reason why I support the alternative recommendation is that, with the level of discretion that's expected um, for approval, uh, I'm not comfortable that there has been, you know, some design excellence or improved amenity or um, environmental excellence in the in the building design. So, um, if an applicant's wanting us to exercise this level of discretion, I, I guess I'd expect a, a better standard of a, a design. Thank you. Any further comments? Councillors, okay. I'll put the um, alternative recommendation. All those in favour? All those against? I declare it carried. Just like to say thank you very much to um, John and Mark for your work on the spot there. Much appreciated. Um, we're now moving on to item 9.3, number 14, oh sorry, 9.2 rather, number 5, Turner Street Highgate, change of views from single house and bed and breakfast um, to single house, bed and breakfast and eating house. Do I have a mover for this item? Councillor Harley, seconded. Councillor Gondrzewski. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, just um, a number of comments and just by way of being completely transparent and Courteous, courteous, particularly to Councillor Topperberg and other councillors who voted for the amendment, I do intend to move a deferral, and I'll go. Um, I'll raise some questions, and I'll um, provide some detail um, as to my concerns about the application as it is, but also about more information that um, I requested in order to make a, a more informed um, and I guess longer have a longer term view. So um, when this came to the briefing. There are a number of questions that um, councillors um, raised and have received answers to, which um, they themselves may need to um, raise. Um, I have um, I had a number of concerns um, about this particular park, um, and that is because it's an incredibly small park. Um, it has multi-use, including kindergarten children um, during the day. Um, it has a fenced-off child's play area, and it was set up as a, um, a dog a dog park essentially with a fence, dogs off leash. It's incredibly popular. Um, there is literally no seating space. Sometimes there's not even a lot of standing space um, and it is routinely in the summer months where the lawn just wears out in parts where there's a, a lot of extra activity. So it is of, of, you know, it's probably 
right up there when it comes to parks in our area that are well activated and incredibly popular. And like several other places in my personal view, it's at risk of being loved a bit to death. Um, so my questions related to, this is a, an application um, of a residential property which is um, also operating an approved bed and breakfast and um, there's also um, a studio on site and the owner of the um, um, property, my understanding is, works, uh, works from home. We have many, many, many parks across the city of Vincent where landowners, residential and commercial, um, are adjacent to um, already popular parks. So one of the main questions I asked was about other parks within the city of Vincent where um, a similar setup existed, residential, um, and where they could um, access through, through um, a gate, and many of our residents do have gates backing onto our reserves. And I did give a list of suggested parks to be added. Um, the information wasn't provided in full. Um, there was a slight misunderstanding, um, and I've been able to speak with the director, Mr Corbellini, about that this evening. Um, so I just, I guess, want to... Um, on the record, list the parks that we have within the City of Vincent which either have adjacent residential or where properties already have gateways um, and um, access. And they are Charles Verriard, Hobart Street, Edinburgh Street, Brentham Reserve, Britannia with 50 plus residents backing on to the reserve, or nearly all with gates, Smith Street Reserve, Hyde Street Reserve, the small park on Shenton Street, Northbridge, which I can't remember the name of, um, Banks Reserve, Robertson Park, the Summer Street Park where we approved a daycare last year down near the train station. And that tiny little park in North Perth on Scarborough Road where we've just put the um, fences around. And I list those because um, I acknowledge, um, and that has been discussed with the director, that we, we assess each application as it comes before us. Um, and we do not, from a planning perspective, apparently think about precedent. But I do, as an elected member here, think about um, what this means for our green open space. I, th I do think about um, what this means from a, an overall placemaking perspective and whether this is a unique enough circumstance that I could put those concerns aside and I can't put those concerns aside because unfortunately it's not unique at all. In fact, there are far better parks where residents, if they put an application in for a small cafe eating house, where I'd say that makes a lot of sense. That's really going to activate a space, minimal impact, loads and loads and loads of space in the park, etc. So my concerns are um, opening hours um, and my concerns are impact on that small park. My concerns are future costs for ratepayers where we are going to maintain an overly active um, park. Talking about paving, um, there's already been mentioned about whether a toilet may at some future point be possible. Um, to be asked for and for members that weren't here when we set up the Hobart Street Park where we fenced it, I don't know and I haven't asked but I would estimate thousands of dollars of ratepay money was spent in consultation over a toilet over and over and over again, hundreds of officer hours, many, many, many hours by councillors. We were inundated, in fact, it was an incredibly popular and unpopular decision that we fenced that park and then didn't provide a toilet. It was horrendous. I'm not saying it's going to happen here, but it is, I'm mindful of that. So um, obviously happy to listen to all the debate um, tonight. I acknowledge that we judge everything um, on its merits, but um, I do want to have um, mindfulness about what happens with all these other parks and all the other residents and and it may be a good strategy and we may want to go down this pathway and open this up and do this in a planned way but I don't believe doing this on a case by case basis is the way um, for us to ad hoc plan for green open space use. So um, I'm foreshadowing um, a deferral um, but I'll do that later on in the debate. Councillor Gondoshevsky. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Oh, sorry. Um, look, I'm supportive of this, uh, the recommendation. Um, uh, I think that, um, I think where we've landed on this is actually really positive in that um, this application isn't actually seeking for the city to um, change the park at all. Um, what's, and you know, what we've ended up with is a small scale kiosk um, inside the adjacent property um, with, um, I believe it's only four 
you know, uh, patrons admitted permitted to um, dine in the park uh, in their property at any one time. Um, I think that um, uh, I, I understand Councillor Harley's. Um, uh, uh, well, I think what Councillor Harley said around this park is accurate. It is incredibly active. It's small, um, and it does require some increased investment from the city in relation to returfing and so on. And that, and and that may um, increase somewhat. However, I th I, th I think primarily that this um, venture will um, service the existing users of the park, of which there are many um, throughout uh, varying times during the day. The park is uh, fairly vacant between about 9.30 and 4 o'clock, and so um, you know, activation during that time um, I don't think would have any um, additional impact. Um, I've done some thinking around opening hours. Um, as someone who uh, lives very close to a park, I, um, I can attest that when you see people arriving um, early in the morning by car, um, it, it can be difficult, or, um, and I presume um, people that perhaps live near yoga studios or fitness studios um, may also, um, that have early morning classes, may also experience some um, impact to their amenity. Um, uh, i.e. getting woken up by slamming car doors at six in the morning. Um, however, look, my observation is that the people that um, arrive to, say, personal training classes in a park or um, yoga studios, etc., they all arrive at a very intense period, five to ten minutes before a class, And whereas the people that arrive and use this business are much more likely to be staggered and um, it is a park that is utilised by local residents uh, and their dogs arriving on foot quite a lot, as well as um, people arriving for kindy drop-off and so on. A lot of them on bikes are on foot as well. So um, I've um, made my peace with the opening hours and I think that a lot of that will be really um, probably in practice will be driven by patron numbers um, and, um, uh, and I don't have any problem with it. I... Um, I understand Councillor Harley's concerns about precedent. I, I think this could set a precedent. I think in this instance it's been managed and I, and I, I wasn't um, particularly happy with the early phases of the discussion on this in relation to, um, you know, sort of um, having to have modifications made to the park for a business to actually um, be able to be incorporated next to it. Um, however, as I said, I think in this circumstance um, I'm, I'm satisfied that we've landed in an appropriate um, an appropriate place, um, and that um, this active park, um, that the the um, users of the park clearly responded in um, the you know in uh, the support of this venture, um, and we didn't we, we had one objection and um, and I think it was 58 or 59 um, support. So um, there isn't a significant amount of community opposition. So um, we see the um, the operator residing um, and operating the bed and breakfast and, at the premises, and so there's you know clear interaction with the local community that will, if there are any concerns, hopefully that will assist in um, having them addressed. So um, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Gondoshevsky. Councillor Toppelberg. No, just a question through you to the Director. Um, proposed condition 1.5 that deals with the de um, deliveries. So deliveries aren't permitted outside of 8am to 5pm. I'm not sure what the food offering is proposed to be, but my guess is if it involves fresh bread, that certainly on a Saturday and Sunday that'll be an issue, but also if it's open from 6am. Uh, is that, just in relation to the deliveries, is that specifically vehicles parking on site or delivering, uh, yeah, I'm curious as to how the eating house is intended to operate over the weekend with what I assume would be the type of um, food that would be offered and whether those uh, hours are too, potentially too restrictive. Through you, Mayor Cole, it's, there's the potential that they are too restrictive for the applicant. Um, they were based simply on the city's home business policy, which sets out those hours for deliveries for home businesses. Given the deliveries will be coming from a residential street, I consider it appropriate to apply the same conditions that are included on home business in the home business policy. Um, so that was the basis for that condition. Now, just on that, and without seeking to amend it, without having investigated it further, if the applicant, if this was approved uh, as recommended, the applicant was aggrieved, is that something that would need to be challenged, or is the applicant able to request a reconsideration uh, from the city or is that is it either a, a new DA or a, cha a challenge it's at or can they ask for reconsideration of condition if that was considered to be an issue? 
Australia Mayor Cole, the applicant, if they were aggrieved by this, would have two options. One would be to lodge um, an application for review with the SAT, and the other would be to lodge uh, an application to amend that condition, which would come back to Council for reconsideration. Okay, um, so I'll talk to it just briefly. Uh, I um, appreciate Councillor Harley's uh, concern more broadly, but uh, I, to me, um, I I don't accept precedent as an argument. Uh, it may be a, a legal argument that is sometimes made, but certainly in planning and in council determinations, it's not something that has ever swayed my view. And I've never uh, I've consistently received advice that, that, that you know, precedent effectively doesn't exist uh, in planning. You just need to have solid reasons as to why something is appropriate, given the merits of its application, or, or is not appropriate. Uh, and the, the comparative game. Uh, where it exists uh, has, has failed many times uh, when, it's been, uh, when it's been presented. This property is unique. Uh, there's probably, uh, whilst there are um, obviously residential neighbours on uh, most sides, uh, the ability to park uh, adjacent to non-resident, whilst albeit across the road, there's probably, uh, at a guess, 250 to 300 lineal metres of parkable space uh, adjacent to the park. Uh, and the properties, uh, you've obviously got the unique position of the uh, Highgate Kindergarten and uh, the car park that services the commercial use, even though it's a res you, know, you have a fully commercial use on Lord Street uh, in a residentially zoned property. I do note um, that the uh, proposed zoning for uh, under Town Planning Scheme 2 for the, uh, the four adjoining properties that front Lord Street uh, is a significant zoning increase, and the likelihood of that remaining, them remaining as they are into the reasonable future, is very limited. Uh, I also note that the question was asked, and there have been no objections raised by any of the Lord Street um, property owners. Um, you know, whilst uh, we often have questions about our consultation and whether it actually reaches the right people, uh, it was publicly advertised, and that there haven't been any um, any objections. Uh, look, I. Uh, I yeah, I, I think that the application is an opportunistic application and will be of great benefit to the applicant, but that's not a basis for judging it in any way other than to say that I think that the uh, the current users, as Councillor Gondoszewski pointed out, the current users will uh, most likely be uh, firm patrons of the proposed business. And given that you've pretty much got the entire well, you do have the entire width of the house, pretty much, or the, or the, the width of the property between it and any other residential use, or at a get, you've got a kindergarten to the south, and in any other direction, you've probably got the best part of 70 or 80 metres before you get to the front of any other property. Uh, I'd have a hard time saying that a small window box out the, uh, out the back of the property is going to, in itself, have a detrimental impact, and I would hope that... Uh, our compliance team would be able to deal with any issues that may arise in terms of car parking or, or other issues, and we've got other f abilities to manage it. So uh, I will support the application or the officer recommendation as proposed. Thank you. Councillor Murphy? Yeah, thank you. I've just got a couple of questions um, just around Councillor Harley's um, comment around the park being at risk of being loved to death. I just wanted to see what the... Um, um, perhaps through the chair technical services view might be if there is increased patronage is the park at risk of being loved to death through you Mayor Cole um, uh, it's already been discussed the park is already heavily used um, so we don't feel that this additional use will make that much difference we already repair the turf uh, there's some paving planned for some of the areas next year to deal with some of the issues so we don't see this as being a big issue. Um, there is a path up to the the entrance, which is, I think, already a bark uh, covered, which we will will replenish like we always do. So, you know, we're not overly concerned about the application from a from an engineering perspective. Thanks, and um, also through the chair, uh, I'm just interested to know: would this um, business uh, in is this would increase? Would it become a rateable business? Would it increase the rates um, to the city? Do we know that? Through you, uh, may I take that on notice if that's okay? I don't know the answer. Um, 
through you, Mayor Cole, the difficulty is that the rates are determined by the Value of General's Office valuation for the gross rental value of the property. Um, if this particular land use causes any material change to the Value of General's determination of the gross rental value of that property, then it will have a consequential <coughs> impact on the rates. Although I think given the um, the primary land use of the property as a residence is not changing, I think it would be highly unlikely to, um, to cause a direct impact on rates purely as a result of this application. Okay, so it wouldn't be a rateable business, it would just be rated as a residential uh, property still, is that, just sorry to clarify. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, um, it's determined on the basis of the land use and in this instance the zoning is not changing, the land use remains as, as the primary land use being the residence. Um, whether or not the valuation that's undertaken by the Value of General's Office is so fine grained as to pick up the additional incidental use of the property over and above the primary use um, is something that we'd have to consult directly with the Value of General's Office on, but my advice is that um, it would be unlikely, this specific application would be unlikely to impact the rates. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> um, I was hoping that we might make a buck out of it, but uh, if we don't, then <laughs> that we're not losing a buck out of it, that's good. Um, uh, look, I think the fact that there's people there in the park and um, they're using it and, um, you know, we should give the people what they want. Um, there doesn't seem to be any opposition. Um, I don't have an issue with it. Thank you, councillors. Any further comments or questions? I have a further question. Sorry, Mayor, just in regards to the deliveries through you. I um, just want to clarify, um, there was a, a little moment ago there was talk about deliveries going through the property. Can I just clarify whether deliveries will be going actually through the front of the property or whether they will be going through the park into the eating house? Through you, Mayor Cole, my understanding is the deliveries will be coming through the house from the street, not from the park. Councillor Tuppelberg. Just a question through you to the CEO in relation to the rates question. Given that there's a bed and breakfast operating on the site currently, is bed and breakfast considered a residential use or commercial use? And I only note that because we have a differential rate at the city and so given the intensity of commercial uses on the property, regardless of its zoning, would it still be rated as a residential property? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, we'll have to look at that in a little bit more detail. Um, it does relate to the advice I provided before about consulting with the Value of General's Office in terms of its uh, GRV rating methodology. Having said that, though, from a land use perspective, um, the bed and breakfast is incidental to the use of the property as a dwelling. It's not the primary use. A bed and breakfast can't exist on its own. It's a bed and breakfast because it's um, incidental to the primary use of, of a residence. Any further comments? Thank okay. you, Mayor. I have um, a, you, an amendment. Are you closing? No, no? I have an okay. amendment. Um, in the event um, that this does um, get up, I have an amendment in regards to closing times at the um, opening hours being Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. If I've got a seconder, I'll speak to that. Is there a seconder for the amendment to the operating hours? There being no seconder, the amendment lapses. We're back to the substantive. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move a deferral motion on this item. Do I have a seconder for deferral? There being no seconder, the deferral motion lapses. We're back to the substantive. Councillor, is there any further comments? I'm just asking because I would like to speak to it, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Um, I just want to say that I do support the officer recommendation. I'm, um, I actually think this is a, um, a great outcome for Jack Marks Park in relation to having a kiosk, um, a very low intensity uh, use um, adjoining. The, the first incarnation that um, didn't make it to council was really looking at a um, kiosk that faced out to the park and used park land for seating, etc. I think this is a really good outcome in that that um, 
that is fully within the property on, on the private land and that the gate, the existing gate that is there will be utilised to, to go to the cafe with, I guess, the majority of people taking out and, um, and, and uh, being in the park. So in terms of it being um, an incidental use, that it's low intensity, that I believe it will be largely servicing the park users that are already there. And in relation to the hours and the noise, that is something that I did give close consideration to and had some further discussion with the director about. And because of the separation from the neighbouring um, residences and the way in which the, the kiosk faces out to the park, I do um, believe that that impact will be, um, well, that there will be very minimal, if any, impact. So for me, I believe this is an exciting opportunity for um, park users to have access to a kiosk. It is something that we have considered in the past where we've tried to introduce kiosks into our parks and that um, then led to an um, opportunity for food vans and food trucks to access our parks. So um, this, this has come up through the applicant seeing an opportunity. It may not have been the first park that we would choose to have a kiosk available to it, but this opportunity has arisen. I think it is a good opportunity and I think the design, um, the, the design before us is, um, is of low intensity and, and quite sympathetic to the park. So I do support this application. Councillors, Thank you, Councillor Harley, closing, closing debate, further, no, further amendment? amendment. Um, my amendment is that approval be granted for 12 months with a period of review. Do I have a seconder for the amendment to provide a 12-month approval period? There being no seconder, the amendment lapses. We're back to the substantive. Are there any further comments on the substantive before Councillor Harley opts to close debate? Over to you, Councillor Hulley. Thank you. Well, I tried. Um, and so I guess in 12 months' time, I'll come back and I'll have a discussion with my colleagues and administration. And if I was wrong about all of this, I'll put it in writing. But if I wasn't, I'm going to put that in writing as well and put it on the record. Um, I, I love exciting opportunities, and I've heard that that term be used tonight. I don't think this has been put to us with any proper risk assessment and I don't um, I personally do not believe that there has been enough enough thought go into where else this could happen and whether this is what we want for our city and if it is let's do it and let's do it properly but if every few months another application trickles in and trickles in and trickles in or if we have a park where five residents I'm not saying this is going to happen but it could further down the track. I think it's a jolly good idea and why wouldn't you um, use a residential property where you can set a business up and where access is through a park um, and any maintenance of that park becomes ratpayer responsibility. It's a sound opportuni opportunistic business idea. Um, I look at the opening hours and I've tried to move the amendment to be consistent with advice we were provided tonight from um, the offices, which is very few of these cafes, in fact none, open prior to 7am because they are close to other residents. And there's a reason for that and that's because nobody likes to have um, in a residential area um, cars turning up, people turning up. It is, Turner Street is small, um, it is tiny in fact and, and um, I do believe there's going to be impact and that's why um, I probably could have supported it had there been a little bit more thought, but when I realised last week that yes, there'll be four people seated, but up to 20 people standing inside the premises, plus outside of the premises, um, I don't believe it's a good idea um, for Jack Marks Park. Um, I believe the opening hours, the reason why they would have been consistent is because of the pain we put the Jackso through. Um, which has been a commercial property for many, many, many years and they have limitations which were in keeping with the residential um, surroundings it was in and I don't believe it's unreasonable for this applicant to have um, opening hours which reflect the fact that this is a residential property, albeit that it's used for commercial purposes on um, several fronts and now a third front. Good luck to the applicant. I don't criticise him in any way for that but I am mindful that this is a residential street. I don't agree that this park won't be adversely affected at all because I saw what happened to Hobart Street. And while it wasn't adversely affected, it recovered 
Um, it caused a lot of angst for 12 months after we set that park up. And people who had never come to Hobart Street before suddenly knew where it was. In fact, it was on a roster um, of mothers' groups that went there. So full at times that park was, you could barely lay a blanket down. It's an incredibly popular park, and I saw it just on the weekend. It was chock-a-block full. Um, so um, this is a very lovely little neighbourhood park, and it took a lot of effort to set this park up and to get fencing around it and it struck a pretty good balance between users from the local area but many 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 users who drive there because it's the only small um, small park that's fenced that um, people feel um, where they can safely take their dogs and let them run um, off lead so if everyone it's like the golden arches if everyone needs a coffee everywhere they go then I guess this is a great idea but I thought there might be one little park left in the city <clears throat> where you know we don't have food vans and um, coffee vans on. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound like this little park is going to be it. Um, I would have thought of that an approval for 12 months is well in line with other approvals that we've given, where we've you know where there are concerns about the impact, where this hasn't been done before, where we would like to see what happens further down the track. Um, so I'm not supporting the officer recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Harley. I now put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you, Councillor Harley, voting against. I declare it carried. Moving on to item 9.3, number 14, Orange Avenue, Perth, second story addition to a single house. Can I have a mover, please, Councillor Toppelberg, seconded, Councillor Gonshevsky. Thank you. A uh, couple of questions. So a question to the uh, Director of Development Services. Proposed condition five in relation to visual privacy says the four windows on the eastern and western elevations. Can we confirm, I think it should say eastern and southern. Can you just confirm that that is the case, please? Yes, through you, Mayor Cole, that, that is correct. I'll first propose that as an amendment, which is to change the word western to southern. Yes, thank you. Con Councillor Gondoszewski seconded. All those in favour? Oh, sorry, does anyone wish to speak to the amendments? <laughs> All those in favour? Declare it carried. Oh, Councillor Harley, did you wish to vote? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, am I Okay. All right. I'll take the vote again. All those in favour of the amendment? Councillor Patakas, you voting? Yes, everyone. Okay. Everyone put their hands in the air all at once. Thank you. Clack carried. Thank you. Back to the substantive. Okay. So I'll talk in a minute about the visual privacy side of things, but just for clarity as well, a further question to the director. So it refers to the four windows. Are we confident and comfortable that that adequately covers because if you look at the way the windows are designed so the southern boundary has windows that are double glazed obscured it's got a number of the windows over the shaft so just referring to the four windows does it need to be any more specific to say that it's referring to the uh, um, louvered window uh, to, to specify exactly which windows or are we comfortable that the windows that are in question that there's no issue on the eastern side but now that on the southern side Will that need to be amended to, because there are one, two, three, four, there's effectively four windows on the upper story on the southern side. Do we need it to specify the four bedroom windows? Yes, through you, Mayor Cole, adding the word bedroom would be beneficial in in that context. Um, it's in there. It's already so in there. If yeah. it's not in there, the then it should be added. Yeah. So, so. Great. Um, okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I understand that the Mayor's had a proposed alternative prepared. Um, unlike my view on the Vincent Street proposal earlier, um, which I felt could not be designed out. I have I think that the issues with this 
proposal can potentially be designed out. So in line with our newly minted standing orders, uh, I shall also be foreshadowing a deferral of this item to allow the applicant a chance to address them, but I'll deal with that later. Um, I have an issue with, so if we look back to last week where some of the questions spoke about the louvered uh, windows and the fact that they were, we were effectively silent on whether they were operable or not or obscured or not, and obviously even being obscured, if they're operable, um, particularly uh, the eastern facing window would give the opportunity to look uh, into the outdoor living area of the adjoining property. So the condition as it's proposed uh, in relation to visual privacy, uh, in fact, it says that it should be screened or modified to comply. Now, the, uh, that clause in the R codes, uh, which is three point, uh, sorry, 5.4.1, uh, which allows uh, for it to be screened. So effectively, uh, if you have that upper floor that faces to the east, it's supposed to have a 1.7 metre setback on, according to the recommendation or the plans. It's looking at a 900 mil setback, so it's 0.8 of a metre closer to that uh, to the, actually to the northern property um, and what we're talking about with those windows is that either they shall be permanently closed and obscured or screened which means there's actually opportunity for there to be an extrusion uh, placed in order to adequ adequately screen them and as a, uh, at a guess it would either, well whether it was a horizontal or a vertical extrusion it would be compliant with the condition but it would be adding built form further into that reduced setback and to my mind, would have additional impact on the uh, reduced amenity to that to the northern neighbour from having that reduced setback. So, my concerns with this property relate not not to the setback empirically, but how it's been designed. And effectively, we do have a square box plonked on the back of a home. Uh, we've had there was some response, and I uh, do note that the neighbour to the south, um, uh, the extent or the further extent of uh, overshadowing uh, or the reduction in overshadowing that would be achieved by reducing the height uh, to seven metres to be a compliant height of the roof uh, is unquestionably minimal and I think that uh, requiring that height to be dropped uh, doesn't actually have planning merit because it doesn't the, the, the impost of that height in itself uh, um, only relates to the potential overshadowing I guess my issue is that coupled with that is that the, uh, the required screening uh, or either screening or obscuring uh, of those windows in the redesign will again potentially have uh, impact either on visual amenity or actually on bulk and scale depending how they choose to, uh, to meet that condition. Um, I think the, I note, note we had in the briefing notes uh, some alternative materials that were, um, that were proposed and whilst materials and finishes broadly don't have a, a huge impact on planning, I think in this circumstance uh, there was a relatively opportunistic uh, uh, perspective that was shown which is effectively front on to the property but if you look at the width of the driveway that sits on the southern side, uh, that impact of the second storey is probably felt uh, to pedestrian or vehicular traffic as you're passing in the streetscape for probably a good uh, 20 or 30 metres of walking or otherwise. It's not just when you're front on, it's that entire experience as you see the property uh, heading, uh, certainly as you head north. Um, and I, again, I, where I've landed on this is that I think that a lot of the issues, I think that uh, whilst there have been some concerns raised about potential future use or otherwise, those are uh, adequately dealt with. I do think that a, uh, where are we, 24 square metre bedroom is an extraordinarily large bedroom uh, to be proposed and yeah, ultimately if that is proposed to be turned into something else then uh, that's something that will need to be dealt with uh, by way of application. So just for, in terms of the built form that is proposed I think that the issues of overlooking and building bulk uh, can be better designed to be reduced without necessarily even a reduction in the footprint of what's proposed but just a more thoughtful design. So for that reason uh, I will um, at a later time after giving everyone the appropriate opportunity I shall uh, seek to defer it, but um, I won't support the officer recommendation as written. Thank you, Councillor Toppelberg. Um, was it Councillor Gondoszewski? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I, I um, don't really get into commentary on design aesthetic. Um, so for me, this is really all about neighbourhood context and streetscape character. Um, I, I note the development isn't compliant 
in terms of building height and is only going to be compliant with overlooking if um, windows are obscured or screened or modified. And I don't necessarily find any of that particularly palatable in this instance. Um, I, I think that um, the design um, uh, does not preserve or enhance the existing streetscape. Um, but I, I note the improvements in the materials in terms of the colour selected. Um, I think that that will um, certainly go some way to um, improving the, I guess, what the cohesion of the palette in relation to the development. But um, I don't really think that the um, materials successfully address the concerns I have in relation to the Balkan scale and the impact of the development. Um, I don't believe it's um, complementary to the existing development of this street, which is primarily single storey um, individual terrace houses. I note there's no character protections on this street, um, but it is, um, I think, reasonably consistent in the way that it presents to the street and this, um, the impact of this um, upper storey development um, will, I think, be felt by the street quite significantly as it stands. Um, so. Thank you, Councillor Gondraszewski. Councillors, any further comments or questions? Okay, look, I did want to talk to some of the issues that have been raised by um, through the consultation process, and there are a number of things that have been raised as concerns. I just wanted to explain that um, that the the issues around things like um, the the tent issues with tenants that have previously um, occupied the building, um, that's not something that council is able to take into consideration when dealing with a planning application. Um, they are issues that the city can deal with through um, occupancy issues, noise, etc. But that that must remain quite separate to to planning approval. Um, while you know I am a human and I have a lot of empathy, I do need to separate that that is not part of the um, planning consideration. Um, and in terms of um, uh, past. Um, potential compliance issues. Again, that is something that our um, City of Vincent can deal with through compliance action, but again is not something that we can, as decision makers on a planning application, consider um, as part of this particular application. Um, the issues that we can consider are the variations that are proposed, and um, my concern is around, um, similar to Councillor Gondoshevsky, I've looked particularly at the um, the height and the um, setbacks and the sort of the scale of the of the um, extension, I do believe that coupled with the um, materials that are proposed, the colour bond and the um, cementel, is that how we say it? Yes, one I've come across with the cladding. Um, I don't believe that they are um, consistent with the existing streetscape, and I do believe that the impact of this development will um, be felt on the streetscape. Um, I did look closely at the overshadowing and um, unfortunately the reduction to seven metres wouldn't um, reduce the impact that that, that has on the, um, on the neighbours' um, windows to the to the south and also to their garage which has um, some transparent um, roofing that, that um, would have a very minimal impact in terms of the actual overshadowing. I think it came down to less than um, one square metre or even less than half a metre difference between um, overshadowing at one um, seven metres versus 7.2. So in terms of um, impacts felt, I do believe that the, ma the majority of the impact from this um, development falls to the to the streetscape through the size and also through the um, use of the cladding that doesn't complement the streetscape. Councillors, Councillor Castle. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, I have a question for the Director. Um, at the risk of foreshadowing motions to come, could you explain the difference between uh, deferring the motion to uh, rework the plans compared to refusing and requiring the applicant to rework the plans and present a new application, in particular in terms of the cost to the applicant? Yes, through you, Mayor Cole. The deferral of the application um, would still allow the applicant to appeal due to a deemed refusal of this application, given it's over um, the statutory 90-day time frame, so they could appeal as a deemed refusal. 
um, but would still allow the applicant to make some changes to the plans if they chose um, without having to lodge any appeal application or any other application um, and then have that presented back to Council for consideration. Um, the refusal um, motion foreshadowed if that was passed the applicant's only option would be to, or that their options would be to lodge an application for appeal with the SAP, which they would need to pay a fee for, as well as um, the other option would be to lodge a fresh development application that had a different design to what was refused previously. So they would also need to pay a fee for that. So the deferral wouldn't involve a fee if the applicant chose to modify the plans and have them reconsidered by council at a later date. Councillors, any further comments or questions? Okay, I'm going to have to put the vote unless I have a motion. So, um, I still had a right of reply either way. Sorry? I still would have had a right of reply either way. Um, yes, that's true, but once you start so your right of reply, there are no further motions. That is correct, Madam Mayor. So I shall move to defer the item to allow the applicant to address the issues in relation to uh, Streetscape, setback, bulk and scale, and visual privacy. Do I have a seconder for the deferral? Councillor Kondrzewski. All those in favour? I declare the um, deferral motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, we are now moving to item 9.6, the North Perth Town Centre Parking Six Month Review of Parking Restrictions. This item has been raised because the council member has a um, proximity interest. Can I have a mover for this item? Councillor Loden, seconded. Councillor Castle. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm happy to support the officer recommendation. It seems fairly straightforward and uh, there has been a fair bit of rigour put into this and it's good to see that after all this effort we've gone to, there's only some minor changes that we need to do. I uh, look forward to figuring out when the next step is and when we can continue this, this process. Councillor Castle, nothing to add? Councillors? Um, look, I will just very briefly comment to say that this is the first time the City of Vincent has undertaken parking restrictions in a comprehensive manner across not just the town, a town centre but also the adjoining residential streets. And you can see from the results that this approach is working. Um, peak occupancy has been reduced across the board in um, the car parks, um, the streets, um, both in the town centre and in the residential areas. And I think that um, given that there's only been two commercial parking permits applied for, um, it seems that uh, those issues around employees finding places to park are, are being satisfied. They have a range of options, whether they pay in the car park, get a commercial permit, or park on some of the longer parking restricted areas of five hours, for example. So I um, just would like to say that um, yeah, this has been a, a very good process and um, shows us that this is uh, the way that we should be tackling uh, parking restrictions in our neighbourhoods. So thank you, uh, Director and Development Services team. Job well done. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, I'll put it all those in favour. Declare it carried. Thank you. Moving to item 11.3, review of corporate service policies. This is an absolute majority decision. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? Moved, Councillor Toppelberg. Seconded, Councillor Loden. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Um, I do have a couple of amendments. And so uh, the first one that I shall move is on the blue, and that is uh, to delete um, the uh, the readoption of the business dealings with the city council members and employees, and if I get a seconder, I will talk to the reason. Is there a seconder, Councillor Loden? 
Uh, just, I had a closer read of this policy, and I think that um, uh, more than anything, it actually puts the the way the policy is written puts the CEO potentially in a compromising position. It uh, makes them the ultimate gatekeeper of all business dealings, which, when things are going swimmingly, is fine for everybody. But when they're not, it potentially puts them in a compromising position. Um, there's also a couple of clauses in there. One in particular, which relates to uh, there's a clause that relates to um, council members. Uh, sitting council members uh, or existing employees having to register prior to July 1 if they want to do business in the following year and there's no provision for them to change that view and there's no separation between soliciting business or uh, responding to tenders or expressions of interest or otherwise. So effectively uh, if a tender was to uh, come out within the city that was uh, that, um, specifically related to an elected member or employee's business or otherwise or closely associated person, according to the policy, they would be precluded from being able to be involved. And I don't think that that's... Uh, we have plenty of other protocols that can deal with that. So, um, yeah, but m more than anything, it, uh, it effectively places the CEO as the sole gatekeeper between someone doing business with the city or otherwise. So. Councillor Loden, do you wish to speak to the amendment? Any further comments on this amendment? Councillor Gondoshevsky? Uh, just to confirm that by the amendment essentially just means that this will be reviewed as part of our normal policy review, uh, uh, policy review process and then come back to Council at a later date. Through you, Mayor Cole, yes, that's correct. The policy will still remain but will be subject to individual review and discussion by Council later. Councillors, any further comments or questions? Okay, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? Declare it carried. Thank you. Uh, so the second amendment uh, refers to some changes to the legal represent way, well, simple change to the legal representation for council members. Um, so what it does is removes an upper limit that effectively references the city's risk management policy and the ability of the CEO uh, to. Well, I'll move the amendment. It's on the orange. Can I have a seconder off. for the um, orange? Thank you, Councillor Loden. Thank you. So, uh, whilst there was some commentary from the office or from the administration in relation to uh, indexing the $10,000 in the existing policy to CPI, uh, there's no basis for where the $10,000 came from originally and whether that's enough, too much, a lot, or otherwise. Ultimately, my view is the CEO has the authority to approve a far greater sum of money to be spent under our risk ma management strategy. And if you look at the nature of this policy, uh, in, effectively, what this clause is looking at is the uh, point at which uh, an individual or a, a, an elected member or group of elected members would have to have legal representation uh, and have the money actually s committed to and spent without coming to council for a decision. Now, given that uh, I think our notice period for a special meeting of council uh, is, I think, seven days or perhaps even less, CLs. Through you, Mayor Cole, the public notice uh, needs to be as soon as practicable. Okay, so uh, it would take an extraordinary circumstance for the money need to need to be approved and spent in that time, and the clauses in the policy effectively allow Council to reverse that decision in any event. So my feelings are that the, uh, it, that's adequately dealt with uh, within our risk management uh, policy and the fact that it has to come back to Council. I'll talk a little bit more on this policy in a, in a moment, but yeah, I. I uh, I felt the $10,000 was arbitrary and 11945 is no more or less arbitrary and uh, that extraordinary circumstance would require extraordinary action at that time and so I don't think putting a dollar value next to it is necessary because there are other protocols that adequately cover it. Councillor Loden, do you wish to speak to the amendment? Councillors, any comments or questions in relation to the amendment on the orange? Councillor Harley? Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just note that I've actually got an, an amendment that is slightly different to this, but we'll come to that I mean, in a minute. My question is, um, I guess, for the record, um, what, what are councillors covered for in terms of, um, I believe it's directors, insurance and other legal fees in, so in the, for example, in the event of a council being suspended? which is a very live issue at the moment, um, and facing a review like many other councils have done in the past, are you able to advise what councillors are able to be covered for in those circumstances? Um, and does this policy 
um, the removal of it in any way impact on that? Um, through you, Mayor Cole, I'll need to just quickly scan through the specific policy because um, the extent of its application is actually defined in the policy. The Department of Local Government um, has also previously issued operational guidelines expressly dealing with legal representation for council members that goes into quite a lot of detail in relation to the legislative entitlement and protections that council members um, have. But um, I'd also just comment uh, before just reading through to specifically answer the question about the extent of coverage that the amendment that is before council to consider now uh, doesn't do anything to do away with the policy. It simply clarifies um, that there is no longer a limit, a financial limit imposed in clause 6.1, but rather there needs to be a um, a test applied as to the, the urgency and, and um, severity of the risk that is in existence there prior to um, my position exercising any authority on behalf of Council uh, to incur such expense in order to provide that legal representation to Council members. However, I think as Councillor Toppelberg rightly inferred that um, it would need to be quite extraordinary because we always do have the opportunity to call a special council meeting at relatively short notice. And um, if, if more than a day is not available, then the notice will be given on the day of the special council meeting and other local governments have in recent times had to do exactly that. So um, I would be happy to just quickly scan through or perhaps even the manager governance might want to provide some comment about the um, the extent of protection provided by the policy, but I would simply add that the amendment that's before Council is not proposing to alter that in any way. Um, through you, Mick. Oh, we're currently in the process of um, our insurance renewal, so we're doing a detailed review of the DNO cover or the equivalent DNO cover, um, including costs for legal proceedings, and that will be done um, in line with um, current best practice across local governments. We're doing that through LJS, which is the scheme through which we insure. So we'll get some good information from what is happening broadly across the sector um, that will feed into that. Um, we expect the renewal to be finalised within the next four to six weeks. Um, can I just follow up then to ask that given that that, that work is um, happening, plus the WELGA have put out some new guidelines on legal representation, um, my question is whether this potentially should also be um, withdrawn and um, dealt with in a similar way to the business dealings with the city. Would that be um, what, in terms of proceeding from this point forward, is that potentially a, um, a more comprehensive approach? Through you, Mayor Cole, I'd have no objection to that if Council wanted to take the same approach as the, as the amendment um, that was previously adopted by Council, uh, for the simple reason that um, if Council members would like to deliberate on the details of this policy further um, in the light of um, the Director of Corporate Services advice about reviewing our insurance policy cover, then um, the appropriate way to deal with that would be um, as per the First Amendment that's just been adopted. Um, but in terms, uh, if, if, the, if the amendment proceeds as is, it's just a follow-up question, um, this change would not necessarily be impacted by the WELGA guidelines and the insurance policy review, um, would it? Or I'm just trying to, in terms of this actual particular recommendation that's before us in terms of um, the change of clause 6.1, could that potentially be impacted by any changes to our insurance policy cover or by the WELGA guidelines? Um, through you, Mayor Cole, the short answer is no. Um, insurance is insurance. This, is, this uh, policy relates to legal representation. And in terms of um, the operational guidelines, if it's the ones I mentioned previously, they've existed for a number of years and have been prepared by the Department of Local Government and really just summarise the legislative entitlements that are available to a council or to a local government in order to um, defend any action against a council member. 
That's fine then. I don't have any issue with the uh, amendment as proposed. I'm happy to support it as is. I just needed to clarify those things. So thank you. Any further comments on the amendment? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? Declare it carried. Back to the substantive. Yeah, so I'll continue if I if I may. Um, just you know, Councillor Harley alluded to it earlier. I think that, uh, and I did ask the CEO and uh, manager of governance and risk to have a look at uh, the policy in, ter in light of recent incidents or recent occurrences within the sector and uh, even in some of our neighbouring councils. And I, you know, there's, I think that we do need to revisit this particular uh, or the that that particular policy. Um, there are circumstances under which I would, uh, as an elected member, absolutely expect myself and my colleagues to be uh, protected or uh, to have the, the support of the organisation uh, and community that they represent. Um, and there are certainly circumstances under which I would uh, absolutely not expect that to be afforded to people. Um, and I also appreciate the irony of potentially the group of people who make the decision about whether or not that should be publicly funded is potentially the group of people who was uh, the beneficiary of those funds. So I think there are some governance issues potentially attached to that. Um, so the, uh, it does need, it does need uh, further work and consideration, and, um, but uh, whilst the, that amendment to 6.1 uh, for that particular clause was uh, relatively minor, um, uh, I think that we would probably benefit from looking at both of those policies uh, that, that have been um, pulled out or highlighted uh, this evening. Um, I'll have my two cents worth about the nuclear free uh, zone, uh, if I may, as well, because that may be brought up later. Just uh, my understanding is the policy effectively says that we'll, uh, no nuclear power plants and no uh, transport of any nuclear waste goods or otherwise, but if there's medical need for it within the, uh, we have no issue with the transfer of, uh, or the, the transport or uh, movement of, um, I think certain radioisotopes was the, was the reference. Uh, for medical use. Just, I suppose, a question through you, Madam Mayor, um, probably to the CEO. The, as a policy, if it was to remain as a policy of council to not allow nuclear waste to be transported through the city, what, uh, on what basis would that be enforceable uh, as a policy given our road networks and the responsibility for it? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, it's not enforceable. Thank you. Councillors, any further comments? Okay, I would like to just make some comments. I don't feel that we should um, rescind our um, relationship declaration register policy without comment. Um, the reason that that has been recommended for rescinding and the reasons why I do support that is that we um, have very um, happily and finally achieved marriage equality in Australia and um, Vincent has been a long time supporter of marriage equality and basically the um, relationship declaration register was established back in December 2012. I think I have the original notice um, before notice of motion before me um, from um, John Carey as a, when he was a council member to, to request to investigate adoption of a relationship declaration register and the purpose behind that was to recognise um, relationship status of couples irrespective of gender. So there was a very clear reason and rationale um, between the, um, for the City of Vincent taking that stance and it was a stance that was um, reaffirmed and supported again when we adopted the Marriage Equality Proclamation in 2014 and um, as we're probably quite um, well known for in local government circles we did launch a pretty strong Vincent Loves Love campaign um, during the marriage equality debate and um, we were very jubilant when marriage equality um, became a reality in Australia. So when going back to actually look at and analyse the data of recent um, relationship declaration um, that have happened in the city of Vincent. We've had from January 2016 to February 2018, we've had a total of six same-sex couples um, declare that they're in a relationship, make the declaration. Um, and we've had uh, 15 um, mixed sex couples also um, take up the opportunity and of those 21 couples just three um, who were mixed couples were from the city of Vincent so in terms of its actual application and value for its intended purpose 
Um, I think that that has declined, and now that we have marriage equality, I don't think that it really serves its initial purpose any longer, um, because we are now starting to see wonderful things happen, like um, one of the couple, couples that supported us during our Vincent Loves Love campaign, Sarah and Joy, Vincent residents, who um, did actually take up the opportunity to declare they were in a um, relationship and um, take part in our register. I think they were the 11th couple, um, not not over Easter, but the weekend before they were married in Hyde Park. So I think that is the sign that we are ready to move beyond the relationship declaration register because change did happen and change is now happening for same-sex couples, including Joy and Sarah, who so kindly um, and publicly supported our campaign. So just in case anyone was wondering if we were no longer committed, we, that, is, that is really the history behind it. So... Um, it's, it's quite a good thing to see that need come to an end because it means that change, change has happened. Are there any further comments in relation to the policies? Yes, I have an amendment. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else got a copy of the pink amendment. So I'm, um, I'll just give, I'm not sure if anyone's had time to read it. Um, so has everyone had an opportunity to read the amendment? Okay, so we've got a mover. Councillor Harley, do I have a seconder for the pink? Councillor Hallett. Um, thank you. I um, obviously note the amendment that's gone before in regards to uh, 4.2.1 and um, would be happy to amend this amendment by um, um, striking through 4.2.1. Uh, which is in regards to legal representation that we've just voted on, if I could get some guidance in regards to the procedure. Um, through you, um, Chair, we've just voted to um, strike through. Yeah, so we so do not what Councillor Harley is saying is because the pink was um, prepared before um, policy number 1.4. Um, oh, no, sorry. Uh, which one was it? Item 1. Yeah, item 1.4 has been um, has been withdrawn, so we'll just strike that through. Um, Councillor Hallett, do you support that change to the amendment on the pink? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. I mean, the, the others have obviously um, been re-adopted as well, nearly all of them, apart from the nuclear free zone, and that was the um, really the main purpose um, and from comments that I made last week. Um, I know it can't be enforced. Um, it's never been able to be enforced, but it was brought in for a reason. And it was brought in because um, Vincent were a new council and we were progressive and we still are. Um, so um, unlike, um, I guess, if you use the argument in regards to the um, marriage register, um, change has occurred, obviously, in that. And we don't need to um, continue being concerned, I guess, and having policies and practices and symbolism in regards to that. I'm not so sure about this issue. I'll leave the politics and the philosophy um, to others, but we brought this in for symbolic reasons and I think it's a retrograde step to remove a policy and I'm assuming the signs that um, are up around the city to say we are no longer a nuclear free zone. I'm, just, I'm not sure what kind of message that um, sends from, um, from this council. Um, and I, if, it, if it's not enforceable, I guess it's not doing any harm. So if it's not, if it's not broken, why fix it, I guess, is one argument. I'm sure others can make um, counter-arguments to that, but I would request that um, this policy remain in place and um, because I do put a value on um, the symbolism of this particular um, policy and the reasons why this particular council brought this in, um, as have many other councils um, adopted similar... Um, similar policies. 
Councillor Hallett. Sure, yeah. I support this amendment. Um, while the current government has reinstated a ban on uranium mining, there are four proposed mines that were approved under the previous government that pending legal appeals may well go ahead. Um, uranium's got uniquely dangerous properties, unlike any other mineral mined in this state, and is a direct threat to workers' safety and the long-term health of our environment and local communities. Um, I take the point that it's not an enforceable um, policy, but I guess last week I asked about what's the um, standing of a, a council resolution from a number of years ago, and without a policy um, connected to it, it really doesn't have any standing, and so I'd much rather have something um, current um, be able to find, be found on the, on the website that has, does, I guess, uh, profile an opposition to um, uranium mining and, and nuclear more broadly. Councillors? Um, look, I'm happy to support the amendment um, before, you know, councillors have put forward a view, a strong view that they wish to have it um, remain in place. From my perspective, while it's not enforceable, if there is a view that that may somehow mean that we have changed our position or could be perceived in that way, then I'm, I'm happy to th throw my support behind this amendment if it gives that sense of security that there's no change in position. Any further comments? Can I put the amendment? All those in favour? All those against? Councillor Tobelberg against? Thank you. I declare it carried. Back to the substantive. Are there any further comments? Okay, I'll put the substantive. All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. Um, we're now at item uh, 12.1, which is reallocation of Loftus Recreation Centre Reserve Funds. This is an absolute majority decision. Can I please have a mover? Councillor Toppelberg. Seconded, Councillor Loden. Councillor Toppelberg, do you wish to speak to it? Councillor Loden. No, any further comments from, the, from Council? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. We are now at item 14.1, Notice of Motion, Councillor Loden, Action on Climate Change. Can I have a mover, please? 13.1, the amendment to the info bulletin. 13.1. 13.1. Oh, sorry, yes, that was a late one that got pulled out. Sorry, I struck it off. <laughs> but we're bringing it back. Item 13.1, um, Information Bulletin. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Castle, seconded Second. Councillor um, Harley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I refer to the amendment on the yellow, um, which was prepared on behalf of Councillor Harley, and I believe Councillor Harley and I have had some conversation about this, and I believe she will be proposing an amendment just to change some of the wording. Um, I support the, the spirit of this amendment um, in that it reflects the desire of uh, this council and of delegates to the Walga Zone meeting um, that they follow the same practices as other local governments to re to record how uh, people have voted in particular in relation to motions. They currently record the mover and seconder of motions but not who voted for and against. Both Councillor Harley and I have raised this issue in our Walga Zone meetings and um, in relation to minutes after the fact. Uh, and have been informed that that's not the standard practice of Walga as they're not bound by the Local Government Act. But um, I think this is a positive step to try and bring them in line with the same transparency practices that we follow and our other local governments follow. Thank you. I'll move yep. an amendment. And I'm, I'm sorry it's a little bit um, on the hop, um, but it's um, after some advice and reading of the Constitution of Walga. And my amendment is to um, Section 2 which is that um, that council notes and supports um, that the city of Vincent zone delegates, uh, central zone delegates, um, have a preference for Welga to amend its minute taking practices at central zone meetings in order to improve transparency, et cetera, et cetera. And the, and the second part of that amendment is that notes that Councillor ha Councillor Castle and Harley Councillor Carley in uh, sorry and Harley intend to ask for their voting decisions to be recorded by name except where unanimous votes have been taken and a third part is that notes that Councillor Harley will adopt the same 
practice as a state councillor for Walga. I'm happy if I get a seconder to explain why I've moved that amendment. Um, sorry, Councillor Harley, just to, um, that was quite useful so that that can be gotten down, but we're actually dealing with this yellow amendment at the moment. So you've seconded the yellow amendment, so we need to deal with the amendment before us first because we can't um, vote on it before. Um, are you trying to move with Councillor Castle's consent? Okay, all right. Fine, thank you for clarifying. We don't have a mover and seconder for the amendment. We've only moved the yes, item. Yes, we do. We have a mover and seconder. F um, we've been... Oh, OK. Sorry, you're correct. Um, Councillor Castle did refer to the amendment. Um, so, Councillor Castle, would, do you wish to move the amendment on the yellow? And Councillor Harley seconding. Thank you. Would you like us to start again, or will you? Um, I'll just conv I'll just ask the manager for um, governance whether you managed to capture that, or would you like a run through again? If you could please run through it again, Councillor Harley. Nation on this page, but I'll do my best. Um, amendment to section two, which is. Um, notes and supports the City of Vincent Central Zone delegates um, have a preference that Welga amend its minute-taking practices for all Central Zone meetings in order to improve transparency, etc., etc. That remains the same. Notes and supports. Notes and supports the preference. The preference that City of Vincent Central Zone delegates. For well good to amend its minute taking practices. Yeah. We still have quorum, but you are clearing the room. <laughs> Yeah. First of all, the journalists left, then all the council members left. Right. I've at least got one vote locked in to this amendment. Right. We've got to get a win any way I can, right? Yeah. So, excuse me, Councillor Harley. The speaker no longer be heard. I think that we're getting there with this amendment. Yes. Um, are you happy with the way Clause Notes 2 and looks now? the preference of City Vincent Central Zone delegates. That the, that's perfect, yes. Um, if you just take out the um, two after Welga, and then notes that Councillor Castle and Harley intend to ask for their voting decisions to be recorded by name, except where a unanimous vote has occurred. It's, sorry, I'm um, sorry, Tim. It's not council decision that they're voting decision. Are we still live streaming? Because this is really yes, of course. I'm going to lobby to be the tennis capital of WA while we've got an audience. <laughs> It's a running gag. It's that would not be 2019. relevant to the amendment before us, Councillor Harley, and I will overrule it. The, the fourth section is that notes that Councillor Harley will adopt, uh, well, not adopt the same practice, will request her voting decision be recorded as a state councillor. So this is a further clause for notes that councillor Harley.
Um, we just think it might need to say we'll request her voting decision. Don't okay. label me, Mayor. Okay, are we complete? Yes, okay. So we have an amendment on the table and we have approval from the um, mover and seconder that this now replaces the yellow. So do, um, do you wish to speak further to the amendment? Just briefly for the record, I know it's procedurally boring, but um, the way that motions get to Welga is not through this forum. It's a it's a different <clears throat> process that um, zone delegates need to do, and the same for state um, council where the where the motions come from the world zones. Um, the, they're not required to do this, um, but um, and if a motion goes up and it gets voted down, then we're going to be in trouble because we actually may not be able to ask for our name. So. Um, we've just chosen to do this because if we change our behaviour at every meeting, there are other delegates around that table who have also asked to be named in the minutes in that way. And so we'll, we'll give this a go. And if we still, um, if they still not can, uh, you know, omit our names, even though we're on the record as requesting, um, then we will we will escalate it through motions, um, etc. I know it's dull, but it's important. It's transparency. Transparency is not always exciting. Thank you, Councillor Harley. Um, are there any further comments in relation to the amendment to the information bulletin item? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? I declare the amendment carried. We're back to the substantive. Are there any further comments or questions in relation to the information bulletin? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? I declare it carried. Thank you. Um, okay. 14.1, Notice of Motion, Councillor Loden, Action on Climate Change. Can I have a mover? Councillor Loden and seconder, Councillor Gondoshevsky. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll note for people that there is a updated page associated with this uh, Notice of Motion with some updates to the uh, administration's comments on it for people to look at if they, so, if they have not already. Um, this Notice of Motion can be broken down into three key parts being a confirmation of the need for urgent action on climate change, the setting of a time, fa time frame for achieving this strategy and then also providing some direction through uh, carbon abatement for this strategy as well. Item 1 confirms City of Vincent's commitment to addressing climate change, whilst item 2 endorses Walga's draft position that we are in a state of climate emergency. I recognise this is an ad advocacy position, but it's an advocacy position for a very good reason, and that's because it's, it's a fact. Uh, the International Panel on Climate Change's fifth assessment report confirmed that without mitigation beyond current efforts, we are headed for a 3.7 to a 4.8 degree increase in global temperatures by the end of the century. The dy dynamics of climate forcing are such that in this scenario we will continue to see increased temperatures beyond this well into the 22nd century as well. The increase in temperature is fundamentally unacceptable for our planet and humanity as a whole. There is a global consensus that we need to limit global warming to a minimum of two degrees and actually achieve an 80% probability of the planet warming by less than two, by two degrees or less. Increasingly, the scientific community and policymakers on reviewing the consequences of increased temperatures are concluding that we need to achieve an 80% probability of a 1.5 degree or less increase in temperature. Currently, the IPCC have not built the models to achieve a 1.5 degree or lower temperature increase. However, to achieve a 2 degree temperature increase, we need to cease all global emissions by roughly the middle of the century and start to actually suck carbon out of the air in the second half of the century. If we are in a 1.5 degree scenario, this will be even more dramatic change that needs to occur. So when we look at this in the context of an emergency, we can need to consider the scale of the change required and the challenge of this change. Carbon emissions are driven primarily by large-scale industrial systems such as power plants, which are typically constructed for 40 plus years. To achieve the reductions in emissions required, this means we need to start making different decisions now. This is because we, we still, that whilst we still have room in the airshed for more carbon now, the infrastructure already constructed will already fill the bulk of the available room so that, so we need to act fast to reduce demand for additional fossil fuel infrastructure beyond what we currently already have committed to. 
This is part of the unburnable carbon concept that explains how many fossil fuel companies are effectively overvalued because they can't burn their current booked reserves without causing catastrophic climate change. So I guess to summarise that point, uh, this is an emergence because of the urgency of need to take action. In an engineering context, for the, and for that matter in a local government context, it is not possible to make this change, uh, change at, this, at its current pace. Uh, part three of the motion sets a time frame for the plan. The best place for this is within our sustainable environment strategy, which is actively under development. Um, and to develop this type of program requires time to investigate and to deliver the best solutions for our community. The time frame created will enable the necessary investigations and plans to be created to deliver these objectives for the 2019-20 budget cycle. We could theoretically include measures in the 2018-19 budget cycle to take action sooner. However, we do currently have a solar panel project which is up for consideration in this budget, which would be an entirely appropriate first step for the city whilst this strategy is being developed. Part five, four and five provides guidance on the delivery of the emissions reductions. For the city of Vincent, our primary emission sources will be our vehicle emissions, stationary emissions and emissions from waste. As such, it's proposed to set a zero net emissions target for the whole of the city's emissions, whilst also setting a target for stationary emissions and transitioning our fleet to low and zero emissions vehicles such as electric vehicles powered by renewable energy. With the development of a waste strategy, it is ideal to consider emissions reductions as part of that strategy as well. In the context of an emergency, there is a need to rapidly reduce our emissions in a short period of time. The city will need to determine how quickly this can realistically occur, but I would hope that we would be able to do this in a short time frame and be potentially at a zero emissions point by 2030. Thank you for listening to my little speech. Thank you, Councillor Oden. Councillor Kondrzewski. Thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I'm happy to support this notice of motion. I think um, the city has um, a, a number of challenges that it will face over coming years, and, um, and uh, climate change is uh, one of those. I think um, where it fits in uh, how we allocate our resources in future, um, as Councillor Loden has said, um, will be assessed on an ongoing basis. Um, but I think it's absolutely reasonable that we highlight the importance of this issue. Um, I think um, in relation to the delivery of the sustainable environment strategy that will be a, a key platform of, of how we um, address climate change within the city, I would love to see it delivered prior to um, March 2019, but I understand that the, um, the work that has been done to date and is planned um, prior to the delivery of the strategy, um, and I think it's really important in this instance that we see our strategy based on analysis and a, and a really rigorous approach um, so that we can set it, look at the options available and determine the best path forward. Um, and, and as Councillor Loden uh, has said, th that's not um, the city is certainly not sitting on its hands uh, waiting for a strategy to be delivered. Um, there is great work um, and um, a, a huge amount of effort and endeavour that's currently being um, applied in this area. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of the, um, uh, I think it's reasonable as well to that we consider. Um, uh, the impact um, of our waste management practices and how that may um, be able to be um, considered and, um, and directed to um, minimise our impact um, on the environment. So I'm very happy to support this one. Councillors? Councillor Toppelberg? Uh, just a question through you to the CEO or Director of Development Services, I think. Uh, in relation to proposed clause 2, um, can you just advise on the status of the of Walga's draft document when the consultation period opens, closes, uh, and when that's planned to be reported to Council? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, the status of Walga's draft poli or the draft climate change policy is that it's only recently been released for comment. Um, I'd have to consult with the Director of Development Services if he's aware of the time frame for consultation, but I understood that administration was aiming to have that draft policy statement reported to Council for consideration at the uh, next Council meeting. Yes, sir, Mayor Cole, that's correct. Um, the time frame is now um, until early May is the, is the deadline now. Um, well, was extended it as a result of number. I think they gave two weeks initially, so they've extended it to early May. 
and it is proposed to be presented to the May Council meeting. I, I, only by way of comment, I, I mean, look, the, I, yeah, I, I think the idea of supporting a draft policy uh, or a contention of a draft policy, regardless of what it relates to, uh, and for fear of being labelled as a climate change denier, uh, I think that the, the way I say this genuinely, the way it's been presented is that we are taking a position on a draft policy or a part of it. Uh, the I think the you could delete two and that make no material change whatsoever, other than honestly admitting that we haven't actually assessed or received a report on the Walgers draft policy. So as a policy principle, regardless of the content, I think that the inclusion of clause two is purely political and that's, yeah, that, that's the, uh, at, the, uh, at the option of the uh, proposer of the motion. I'm not going to ask for it to be voted separately or pulled out, but I do not think that it adds anything to it other than uh, pre-commits us to a position on a policy that we're yet to make comment on and we're going to come back to the very next meeting. So I do take some issue with that, but in principle uh, the rest of it is in line with uh, where we are moving as a local government and community and where we should be. So I don't, I'm not going to seek to remove it, but it's important for me that that is recognised, that uh, it would take an odd position for someone to take a different view of it at the next council meeting, considering we haven't had it presented to us. But uh, yeah, leave it as it is, I guess. Councillors, Councillor Harley, and then Councillor Hallett. Um, I've got a <clears throat> couple of qu questions and a, an amendment. I'll start with the amendment first, and I am, am going to move an amendment to delete clause two. Happy to get a second out, thank Seconded you. Seconded by Councillor yeah, Toppleberg. Uh, um, Councillor Toppleberg has stolen some of my thunder, but I'm going to speak anyway. Um, I, I like to see stuff. Um, I am not a climate change denier. I'm happy to be criticised for not supporting this policy in full, but I need to see what it is Welga are going to um, say. Um, I don't believe this adds or takes away. However, I would be concerned about supporting something um, and leaving it in Welga's hands just to come up with a policy. So um, I, would, I would ask that councillor support the deletion of Clause 2. Uh, who was it? Sorry, Councillor Toppleberg, you seconded. Do you wish to speak? Um, I, look, the, uh, I have read... Welga's draft policy and uh, look that you know um, we'll talk more to that when it comes uh, it comes back before us but I uh, I um, yeah for the reasons I spoke of earlier I will yeah, we'll see how it flies but I'll support the amendment councillors on the amendment council Patakis uh, it's just a, a question on council's position on endorsing a uh, a draft policy through you, Mayor Cole. Um, is, is that a normal practice? I mean, I would have thought a draft policy or a draft... Sorry, just verifying if that's thunder or an intruder. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Patakis, yeah. for being distracted. It's quite noisy. Possums in the roof. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Patakis, please go um, on. Yeah, just whether it's normal practice, um, this was through you, Mayor Cole, maybe to the CEO, one of the directors, um, whether it's normal for Council to actually endorse um, any document coming from any organisation while it's still in draft form. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, I'm, I can't speak to the history of whether the City of Vincent Council has ever dealt with something like that, but it is entirely at Council's prerogative um, whether or not to endorse a position that is expressed in the local government, the Walgers uh, policy statement, whether it's climate change or whether it's any other matter. Councillor Hallett. Can I just clarify, because I don't read that as endorsing the policy statement. I read it as endorsing the position expressed that there is a climate emergency which requires urgent action, as opposed to the full document with a range of um, items in it. Do you no. need a question at the end of that? No, look, through you, Mayor Cole, um, yes, that's, that's how I um, would clearly interpret that as well. And if I gave an indication to the contrary, then... That was certainly unintentional. Um, the wording is very clear. Councillor Castle. Press the wrong button. Um, through you, Mayor, I, I support this amendment. I see Clause 2 as being premature to endorse a position in a 
draft policy, particularly given that we're going to have the opportunity to review our position on this in next month's meeting, which is not very far away. Um, I also agree with Councillor Toppelberg's comments that removing that clause from the motion doesn't affect any of the material outcomes and the actions that the city will take. And it certainly doesn't preclude the city from making that uh, affirmation or, or endorsement of um, a position of climate emergency in the future. It just doesn't lock us into that before we've had an opportunity to review that policy in full. Councillors on the amendment. Councillor Lowden. Um, I won't support the amendment. Um, in my view, this is that uh, there is a climate emer this is basically saying that there is a climate emergency which requires urgent action by all level of governments to avoid an unacceptable burden on future generations. In my mind, that's a fact. That's, uh, that's been a fact for a very, very long period of time. And whether or not we've reviewed a policy that the Walgers policy formally at a council level doesn't change that. Uh, that piece of information that we, we have had it circulated to us, so it has been available for review by councillors as well. We were offered the opportunity to comment on it at that time too. So, for me, this I'm, I'm entirely comfortable with that remaining in there. Councillors, any further comments on the amendment? Councillor Hallett, have you just I'm asked sure. a question? Have you on the amendment, or have you spoken? Just you just asked a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, I don't support the amendment either. I did want to comment a bit on the emergency um, language, but I was going to do that under the substantive, if that's OK. Um, but I, just in terms of um, the timeline in which emergency has been around, um, in 2007, the UN Secretary General said, I quote, this is an emergency, and for emergency situations, we need emergency action. It's not a new proposition um, to call it an emergency. And um, I think that we... Um, would be quite comfortable and should be quite comfortable um, declaring it as such um, in the light of the scientific um, detail that Council Lowden's already provided. Councillors, Councillor Murphy? Yeah, look, I read it as um, that we uh, endorse a position which is that it's a climate emergency which requires urgent action by all levels of government, um, so I won't be supporting the amendment. Um, I think almost everyone's spoken. <laughs> um, look, I'll speak frankly on this. My concern with the original um, motion that didn't make it to council was that I felt it was tied very strongly to a particular campaign, um, very much targeted at local government. And my view is is that Vincent um, has, you know, pretty much got a pretty clear path forward in terms of what we're doing with our sustainable um, environment strategy, um, that we are considering initiatives before us now in this um, coming budget round um, to, to deal with um, solar power and to, to take on this issue. Um, but in terms of um, actually signing up to a particular campaign around a certain form of words, which then led to a certain type of strategy, which was separate to what Vincent was already doing, where I felt that the outcomes were already being captured and the intent was clear. I wasn't really up for that. Um, now that we're talking about language that's being um, discussed more generally, that it's um, language that is appearing on the international stage around climate change and where Welga is recommending um, this form of words, and um, it's, it's for me uh, a much more comfortable proposition. So um, in relation to the amendment to remove Clause 2, I'm actually comfortable to support it as is, given that I don't feel that we're signing up to a particular campaign, which was my particular issue. Um, I'm, I'm happy to support that as is because I feel that in a month, when the Welga paper comes before me, I'll be making that same decision. So if there are, unless there are any further comments on the amendment, I'll put it. All those in favour? All those against? I declare it lost. Back to the substantive. Thank you. I have some um, further questions through you, Mayor, and they're in relation to points 4.1, 2, 3 and 4, <clears throat> and some questions and concerns that I raised at the forum um, about really about the open-endedness of um, what these sub-clauses are saying. So I just want to, I guess, get some clarification about um, <clears throat> 4.1 says set a target of zero net carbon emissions by a defined date, what's that date going to be? 
through you, Mayor. Through you, Mayor Cole, um, it will be defined by the Sustainable Environment Strategy, which will come before Council <coughs> workshop and then be presented to a Council meeting for Council to define what that date should be based on um, the trends and the information that we provide with that um, to support that date. And so I guess that's the same answer for 4.2 through you, Mayor, to the Director? Through you, Mayor Cole, yes, that's correct. Okay. So um, through you, Mayor, to the Director, in regards to 4.3, four, um, 4 there were some questions raised last week about, um, and I noticed that the word fleet has been taken out. So can I just ask whether there's any other model that you're aware of operating with any, in any other local governments at the moment in relation to this, achieving this outcome? Through you, Mayor Cole, I'm not aware of any in Western Australia. Mm -hmm. I, I am aware that there are some international examples of local governments and governments more generally that have put in place um, strategies to increase the uptake of electric vehicles. Um, but in the case of Western Australia, I'm not aware of any examples. Okay. So my final question was in regards to 4.4 .4 and about whether there's whether there are any costs at all, um, back of the envelope, um, whatever, any pencilled in costs about what um, this may cost, because there's, there's not a date on when this would occur by, so I guess it could take 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, so it's a little bit open-ended, in fact, but given the open-ended nature of it, I'm still interested to know um, some approximate costs and are we committing to something here in terms of a budget matter? Through Mayor Cole, again, there has not been any costing undertaken or dates set as part of um, investigating the potential for a, a fully electric vehicle fleet. Not that that necessarily states that. It's about um, either investigate, either applying electric vehicle fleet or other technology to deliver on 4.1. Um, so really the date and what strategies we take will be defined by the sustainable environment strategy in accordance with 4.1. So it will be a council's, it will be council's decision as to what that date will be, um, what kinds of strategies should be um, investigated and then applied based on the information um, that's put together with the sustainable environment strategy. Thank you. Through you, Mayor, I'm going to um, move two amendments, and they are to 4.3 and 4.4. .4. I'm happy to outline those without getting into the debate, and that it be a word change from include to, um, oh God, I just had it, hang on, to include plans to investigate. Um, and I'll explain why, um, it may seem semantics, but I'll explain why if I get a seconder. Is there a seconder to, is that for both 4.3 and? 4.3 and 4.4. Okay, 4. to change the word at the beginning of each clause, include to investigate. Is mm -hmm. there a seconder for that mm -hmm. amendment? Um, Councillor Gonczewski. Thank you. The reason for, well, I'm not um, actually opposed to moving to electric fleet vehicles and I'm certainly not opposed to um, schemes um, that would encourage a community um, to move to electric vehicles through the provision of those facilities um, in the city in the same way we've provided infrastructure and facilities to encourage cycling. I am concerned about the open-endedness of the use of the word include, which becomes a much more definitive statement. Um, I'm, I would like um, administration to investigate these and obviously come up with options and um, to put a little bit more rigour, but until I see some evidence, and that means costs, and that means examples, real live examples, um, particularly in regards to community electric um, um, vehicle take up um, and what it's gonna cost the um, ratepayers to move to um, zero emission fleet purchasing practices. Um, I would feel more comfortable in supporting this motion um, as a whole with the word investigate rather than include. Um, Councillor Harley, can you just confirm that the change that's been made on the screen, is that what you were seeking? My understanding was that you wanted to change the word include 
to investigate. I think they effectively... Oh, it's just disappeared. I think they effectively do the same, but what, what was your intent? Um, it kind of... It does achieve the same outcome. I'm not necessarily um, wedded to including plans. I would like the administration to investigate them um, and provide us with options. So my original amendment was investigate plans rather than include. I think we're having some technical... Oh, yeah. So if you see what's on the, on the screen, that's, that's different to what you were proposing. Would you like it to be changed so that it says investigate Invest plans? Investigate... No, investigate... Plans to plans. support the uptake by... Of electric vehicles. Oh, God. Which I think is still a strong statement in regards to um, I'm supportive of these, but I would like some, an investigation done about whether these are even feasible to be included in a plan, and if so, some more rigour and framework around costs, etc. Just to clarify, I think the issue with the way in which administration has written this up is that then the envir sustainable environment strategy, it would just have plans to investigate rather than actually having the work being done. So I think that we do need to revert to Councillor Harley's um, amendment, which was to change the wording include to investigate. Yes, that's, that's it. Thank you. For both 4.3 and 4.4. .4. And to revert back um, the wording that was struck out and changed. Otherwise we'll have a strategy for a plan to, <laughs> to investigate. So that was seconded by Councillor Gondoshevsky. Um, Councillor Hulley, do you wish to continue speak? Have you finished speaking to the amendment? Councillor Gondoshevsky, do you wish to speak? Um, yeah, look, I, I was happy to second the amendment so we could, I could hear um, Councillor Harley's rationale. I think what we've got is that the current wording says that the strategy should include a plan for the transition or to support or, you know, uh, versus the uh, alternative is that the strategy will include an investigation. I would assume that part of um, the process that's going to occur over the 11 months between now and the delivery of this draft strategy for advertising will be that investigation and part of the reason that we are going to hold back in relation to um, that delivery date is so that that thorough investigation can occur. So I, I feel confident that um, the sort of uh, analysis and um, uh, you know, resource allocation towards this particular piece of work um, will occur um, over that period of time. Um, so I don't uh, see, um, I don't really feel that, that the amendment is um, going to, uh, I don't feel that the current uh, wording will preclude that investigation. I think it's an integral part of the planning. Um, I think what the um, Section 4 seeks to do Yes, section four is to set a view um, around um, some, I guess, minimum criteria or some key elements that should be addressed within the sustainable environment strategy. I think transport emissions are um, a significant component of um, uh, emissions, and there's also um, certainly uh, potential cost savings that can be investigated um, in relation to those emissions. So I'm, I'm satisfied with the um, current wording in that I believe that the investigation will occur prior to the uh, draft strategy being delivered and that um, the um, I, th I think it's reasonable to say that w what is um, desired to be seen in the strategy is some plans for the rollout or the support of such technology. Councillors on the amendment? Um, okay, I was going to say something. I'm not sure what it was now. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's turning out to be a long meeting with all these um, amendments and um, alternate motions, etc. Um, look, I understand Councillor Harley's point because I think what you're saying, Councillor Harley, is that you feel like the wording is locking us in to do this. And I do um, understand that um, 
that the consultant, that's the first body of work that will be done, will be really getting a, um, a handle on our emissions, where we currently are, um, what, um, what are our biggest emitting practices, whether it's, um, you know, is it our waste, is it through our... I mean, obviously, they're all, all of the measurements. And then looking at what will be the most cost-effective way and the most um, efficient way to start reducing those emissions. So... Um, so look, I can see where, where you're coming from, Councillor Harley, because I think that body of work will really inform what sort of um, measures are in the sustainable environment strategy. Um, but at the same time, I think that the electric vehicle is, a, is coming anyway, and I think that um, this doesn't mean that it tires Council to saying we're going to put all of our eggs into the electric um, vehicle basket. It might mean that we consider things like having um, power charging stations or that you might get potentially discounted parking if you're driving an electric vehicle into a town centre. So I think there's a, num there's, there's a number of things, like if we dis discover that um, Tesla Model X's, which I'll talk to you about because I've just done helped my year two do an assignment on the vehicle. Currently at $120,000, like if we were going to say, well, if we bought a fleet of Teslas at $120,000 each and it reduced our emissions by X, that's okay, but if we're going to put our funding into more solar panels, that would reduce our emissions by Y, which is much greater than we would opt to do Y over X, but I don't think that it's that strong that it's tying us to particular you know, expenditure or um, saying that we're going to sort of favour that over other initiatives. I think there's still the flexibility there once we've done that very important first step of actually getting to groups with our emissions and how we can best target emission reduction. So while I do appreciate the amendment, I don't think that the original wording is, is problematic from that perspective. Any further comments on the amendment? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour of the amendment? All those against, declare it lost. Um, back to the substantive. Are there any further comments on the substantive? I have a question, um, Mayor, and it's just in regards to the replacement page um, and just in comparison to the notes that we were provided at last week's briefing um, just over one week ago, which were very strong in relation to recommendation three, quite lengthy, in fact, about the reasons why administration didn't support it. I'm actually not used to seeing um, the actual notes change. I'm used to seeing clauses change and, and things like that. So I want to know what's changed in a week. I want to know why last week, when this was when this was presented. So I'd like to understand the process that the administration went through to go from a position of not being able to see a way through this to saying, yes, it's achievable by March 2019. Yep. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, the simple answer is because the, the change that Councillor Loden made to Recommendation 3 now aligns with the scheduling of the body of work that administration had previously um, been working to. So the issue is that when the wording of administration's recommendation was presented to Council briefing last week, it responded to a recommendation three, which at that time related to presentation of the strategy, in essence, in its final form, uh, to council for adoption by a particular date. This now qualifies that it's talking about presentation of a draft strategy to council for advertising by March 2019, which is exactly the time frame administration had already been working to. Unfortunately, the admin comment just hadn't been updated to reflect the change to the recommendation in Councillor Loden's motion. Councillors, any further comments on the substantive? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour of the motion? All those against? Declare um, it carried with Councillor Harley voting against. Okay, that um, concludes our um, our uh, reports other than a confidential item. So to deal with that confidential item, I will request that I have a mover and seconder to go in camera. Moved Councillor Toppelberg, seconded Councillor Gonshevsky. All those in favour, declare it carried. Thank you very much.